there's no music if you have no body to play it with. So take care of your body first. You getting into the gym and you lifting weights and working on muscles is this it's physical therapy for the benefit of your playing. The truth is nothing works like just taking care of the simple stuff, diet, exercise and sleep. Take care of that and you'll be fine. Welcome back to the Tuned and Strong podcast. This is Angela McHouston of Music Strong. And this is Dr. Jen Cabas May of Tuned and Toned Performance. We wanted to uh, talk a little bit today um, about a subject we've kind of danced around for quite a few episodes at this point. Um, and it has to do with uh, student teacher relationships and uh, how those can go wrong. Uh, I believe we're going to title this one Toxic Teachers, but there's a lot to unpack. So if you're tuning in, buckle up. Um, <laughs> but we're going to lead into this with uh, a story that Angela was telling me about. Uh, it's a bass player that you spoke to recently. Yeah, to, actually, this afternoon, I got a, I got a phone call from a, um, a bass player, an upright bass player. So, um, I mean, yeah, he obviously is, has transitioned to electric for some other stuff, but he plays a lot of upright and what he was telling me today is that his fingers, um, I'll see if I get this right. Uh, the, 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 the specifics are not important, but the gist is what's important. Um, he was saying that his fingers have too much mobility in the joints and they are, his word was that they're deviated. So they're not hitting the strings correctly. And so that's so really kind of affecting of his intonation, which if you know anything about string players, you know, if you go one direction, you're going high, you go the other direction, you're going low. And if you're not mm -hmm. able to accurately put your fingers where they need to go, that's going to affect the way you play. Well, yeah. he said he had actually really bad uh, tendonitis. At least he thinks it's tendonitis. It was never properly diagnosed. Um, his teacher was, in his words, very militant and offered no help and demanded that he make sure he do his senior recital no matter what basically. And in the middle of all this, didn't notice the weird finger patterns that this guy is dealing with. So as the years have gone on, uh, it's gotten worse. Um, he took a, you know, he took a break for a little while after that and the quote tendonitis um, got better, but he said, actually, he said that there, it felt like there was something in his wrist that not broke, but like tore and oh he never got it checked out. So, you know, I mean, he had this thing to do and he couldn't be, you know, and the teacher is just not helpful. And so what, basically what he said is that <laughs> there's no love lost between him and this teacher. And now he's considering putting away his base for good. Mm -hmm. And the man's like 30. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the other part of this is that the teacher was getting close to, he was A, really busy, had mm -hmm. like 20 students, and I'm thinking of a certain other teacher that I know, and I've ha been in this situation myself as well, I've had well over 40 students. I know teachers who have 60 to 80 students, right. and they are with it. To me, that is no excuse. If you're too busy, you shouldn't have that many. Yeah. There's just no reason, right? But then mm -hmm. he said he's also he was also getting really close to retirement, and that's another thing we got on back because... Uh, if you're getting close to retirement is no excuse for being sloppy, lazy, or not paying attention, you should just quit. Right. Go ahead right. and retire. Yeah. And there's so many, there are so many instances out there of, I mean, this is, we, we talked about with the episode with Garrett Hope, this is a field that you can die in your job yeah. as long as you still want to be there, you know? And I've, I see people who are like way older than you would expect continuing to teach and you know, maybe they're having to cut their student load a little bit, but I mean, they're present up till the day that they retire. Mm -hmm. Very present, you know, because that's what, that's why you get into it. Ideally. You love what you not, do. You know, ideally. I guess not why everybody gets into it, but that's why most people who want to teach get into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it really is 0% excuse. It's that's laziness is what it is. It is. It is. That's I mean, how do you, how lack do you of responsibility? Look on an upright base, your fingers are right mm -hmm. up by your face. How do you miss mm -hmm. this? I mean, granted, they're not there all the time. That's pretty obvious. I mean, if your fingers, I mean, how do you teach classically train somebody and not notice something like that? 
And again, oh, maybe maybe the student was not also communicating this. Yeah, Th- this t- kind of ties into, uh, it was probably a little earlier than I was expecting this segue, but this ties into what we were talking about with Lee last last episode, I think, two, two episodes ago yeah. with uh, Lee Pearson with, um, you know, people are missing seeing weird or poor physical patterns in their students because they're looking at the music while teaching. Right. I've known Why plenty of, right. I've known plenty of other instructors who they're looking at something else while they're listening. They don't just don't look for whatever reason. Um, sometimes it's intentional. It's not out of malice. It's right. Right. You, know, you want to hear what's stuff. going on and you don't want your eyes to distract you sometimes. I get that. Right. Right. Or sometimes you're doing it. Um, like I had uh, one gal I knew had really, really, really bad stage fright. She could record, no problem. Blacked out stage where she couldn't see anybody, no problem. But if she was in the same room with you and she knew that you were looking at her, she just could not play. Mm-hmm. So you look so away. There are, there are yeah. times when that is intentional, but when it's something that's a habit because either you're just too lazy to look or you just like, there, there are reasons that that happens, but it's a big problem. And especially, again, we don't know the situation, but if a student is complaining to you about pain, that's where we go from unintentional, you just miss this thing, or you don't know what to do, to now it's negligent. And especially if you're going to come at that same student with a militant attitude. Yeah, that, that's I, a, a big, big problem. I feel like the whole militant attitude is is really kind of old school. It is. And not in necessarily all the best ways. Sometimes it's really good because, you know, I get I get students with excuses and you just don't want to hear yeah. it. I'm like, I don't care yeah. what your excuse is. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 you need to learn responsibility. You need to own this. Yeah. You know, but, but at the same yeah. time, I mean, not to the, not to the um, exclusion of paying attention to somebody's physical posture. They're, mm-hmm. you know, are they... You can, how many times do you see a musician? And if you're, if you're looking, if you're, if you're not watching, I'm gonna put my hand on my shoulder and do this, this kind of thing with your arm. The circular the, chicken wing the thing. Circular, <laughs> yeah. With the, like drawn circles with your elbow. I mean, you see this all the time, right? Yeah. That's a clue. Something's going on. I mean, as a trainer, I'm like, Hey, so what's wrong with your shoulder? Oh, nothing. Yeah, there is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why would you do, uh-huh. you don't just do that. There's something right. in your brain that says, Hey, it's tight. I got to move it. And if you're yeah. missing that as a teacher and that's, yeah. or they're flinching or something. I mean, like, right. Or my favorite with clarinetists is the wrist circle. They'll hold their arm down by their side, but they'll do the wrist circle. The whoop, camera's over here, this thing, you know, like no, figure you're eight, figure eight uh, whatever, but I'm like, Hmm, what's wrong? Or the, the hand open and close pump. Like they do when you've got your, uh, we're going to draw your blood. Shaking so your hands. Like, huh. No, nope. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Something well, why wrong. would you say nothing? Because you're you're afraid to be wrong because teachers or, are gods? No, they're not. Or because you just don't think that's unusual. Or right. A lot of times. Un- unusual is not the word I mean. Um, you don't think it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's it's, a big one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So. But a teacher should be on the lookout for those kinds of things. You don't want to let that slide. Right. And I know that we're going to sound biased here because this is what we do, but I mean, I had multiple good teachers who were trying to look at me and even if they didn't know there was a problem, like you're doing this funny thing or you're using a lot of finger pressure or test my, test my setup. You know, I go in like, something's weird. Let me play your instrument. Like your keys are really heavy. You know, even if they Mm -hmm. didn't know I had an issue, that was just part of being a good teacher. And if they did know I have an issue, knew I had an issue, like, okay, well, we're going to try to address this from Mm -hmm. a technical perspective but at that point like okay well you need to go talk to your doctor because that's all they know how to tell you to do yeah go see a doctor which one (laughs) the different issue yeah but at least the intention and the care was there right right yeah so like that that whole old school militant thing is way outdated i will counter that with now there's teachers who are so soft that i think they're ruining their students it's a different topic it's a different i got a fun one I got, I got fun. Oh yeah. That. So when I was at, oh, I'm just going to drop names. It doesn't matter. Oh boy. <laughs> not, not the, not the teacher's name, but I, I, w- I started my graduate degree at Appalachian state up in Boone, North Carolina. Um, mm-hmm. Hated it. It was not my jam. I, I, you know, I, I had no idea until I got there and went, Oh no, this is not for me. This is not my scene. 
I am mm-hmm. the graduate student. Mm-hmm. The? Mm-hmm. Oh no, no, I don't thrive well in, in that. No. And right. I was bored. That's not yeah. a good place to be. So it just wasn't, it just wasn't what I thought. And long story, but I was a graduate assistant. So mm-hmm. what part of my assistantship duties was that I was uh, with a certain teacher and he had me grade a lot of his papers. Mm-hmm. Fine. Talk about being soft. This guy, I was not allowed to use a red pen because it would hurt their feelings. I'm like, I looked at him and just like, I would took everything I had to say, not say, are you kidding me? I mean, cause you know, there's always one person in the class that gets everything, like yeah. just, it's not their subject. And I yeah. don't care if it's a page full of green marks, mm-hmm. but it's red is just triggering. Yeah. Uh, that blew my mind. Like that's a little yeah. soft, man. Really? Yeah. These are yeah. adults at this point. Yeah. Right. Not kindergarten. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not like it's not like using a red pen means like you're when you're grading a paper. By the way, if you guys have never graded papers, most of us are not looking to dock you. Most current looking instructors don't to. want to. No. I was right. looking for excuses to give them the, the, the point. I'm like, oh, that was close, yeah. you know? Yeah, right. I mean, that's certainly what I've done. And that's what I've seen done th- throughout my academic career, which was yeah. quite long, you know? Um, like, yeah, there were the odd ones, odd instructors who were out to get you. And you just had to know that. Yeah. That's but- not the norm. Most, most of them are like, look, I just correct this. And half the time they were like, if you submit it early, I'll give you these corrections, fix it, and then submit it, and I'll give you the grade that you would get with the corrections. Right, because they want you to learn it. That's the point. It's not not failing you. It's Big time. it's not about getting the degree. It's about right. it's about getting the degree, but it's about learning the subject matter to get the degree. Right. I'm just docking you all over the place doesn't help you learn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. So. And, I mean, I could not use red, <sighs> orange. Any of that color spectrum, pink, totally out. Purple was okay. Green was okay. Black, no way. Can't see anything. Like, what? Don't you have more important things to be worried about? Right. Anyway, so not to segue, that, that's not like necessarily yeah. a toxic trait, but talking about being too soft, I'm like, yeah, you can, you can yeah. definitely go both ways. Yeah, well, and I've, I've seen the too soft thing, the impact of that over time on uh, studio, from studios also. I'm not going to say who it's uh, not the most, it's certainly not the most common thing yet, but um, one particular location, um, the way that undergrads are handled specifically. Um, Because look, by the time you get to grad school with most current instructors now we're, we are seeing some turnover here so i don't know how long this is going to be true anymore right right but with the previous generation of um faculty members it wasn't every story i've heard has been previous generation before us of faculty their instructors were like hardcore out to get you make you cry because yeah. if you were going to survive like well you better survive now or you may as well leave because you're weak yeah. So you're never going to make it in the music world without thick skin. Let's develop it now. Yeah. Right. That's two generations past current. Well, pa- last one, which is pretty much at the, at the point of this podcast, still in power. Um, they were much. Uh, yes, I'm using the term in power. Uh, <laughs> I'm not taking that back. Okay. Um, so they, they are much gentler than their previous instructors, but they're not. They are not soft people. Yeah. Then some of the new ones, this is becoming more frequent with. So again, it's very unusual at the moment, but you'll see the grad students tend to respond to the softer approach better because they've already come from a place where they've gotten, they've gotten their asses handed to them yeah. for at least four years. You know, like there's often emotional issues by the time you hit grad school. Yeah, sure. But when you come in as an undergrad and you've been babied, and because you're coming out of high school where usually you're the best one in your school. Yeah. And you're probably one of the best ones in your state. And so you think you're special. And then you come into an undergrad setting where it's so, 
like in some ways it's great, right? Cause it's really nurturing, but it's yeah. so soft that the ego that comes out of it, I'm like, you start out great for the first two years. And by the time you get to the last two, I'm like, I would never hire you because your ego is so yeah. big. I would never recommend you for a gig. Mm. I would never endorse you for anything because your ego is so big that you don't understand where the rest of the world is. No. And I don't mean like, oh, I think I'm the best thing ever. I mean, like it makes them treat people in a really, really just nasty way. Mm. Like, did you forget, kiddo, you know, and so, did you forget that uh, we worked together in one or two instances? I helped you get this position because I liked you. And now you're treating me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm. A couple of those situations. Yeah. Well, you know yeah. what? Real world is you get into an audition and after three notes, they don't like you and you hear, thank you. Uh huh. How are you going to handle that? that. Mm, How are you going to handle that when your ego is that giant? Yeah. So like there's, there's problems with that approach too. Yeah. That I don't think are being just, I mean, we pretty much all know the problem with the militant thing, right? It's just Mm -hmm. like, oh, suck it up. And and if you're hurting, it's because you're weak. Well, great. That's how you take high potential performers, high potential musicians and just ruin them. Right. So like this bass player guy, I mean, like he's considering quitting playing yeah. all together like this this teacher basically ruined him and yeah. you know I, I I talked to him and I'm thinking well this is outside my scope of practice you know I don't deal with hands but ironically I'm on my way to my hand appointment hand appointment you know to be dealing with my thumb and my broken elbow and all this and yeah. like let me ask her you know so uh by the way if you're dealing with that her suggestion which I totally agree with talk to a hand surgeon which that doesn't mean you're getting surgery Surgeons do a lot of things that are not uh, cutting you open, right? They do a lot of things, but they're at least going to like take some x-rays, find out what the heck is actually going on. You don't want to self-diagnose, right? Mm -hmm. So, so go talk to a hand surgeon. They can actually refer you to people. Yes. There are great surgeons and there are terrible ones. There are great therapists and bad ones. And there are great teachers and bad teachers. I mean, don't lump them all together. So that's just my PSA. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, okay. One of my friends is a hand surgeon. She was a flute player for a while. And I just helped one of my, uh, my brand new brand ambassador, Don, um, he was having like weirdo fingers with his fingers, right. Uh, mm-hmm. weirdo problems with his fingers. And we talked to her and she's like, no, go see a surgeon. I don't, I don't think he needs to cut you open, but he can actually find out if this is X, Y, or Z turned out to yeah. be Z. He's good. Yeah. yeah. You can't treat the thing if you don't know what the problem is. Anyway, yeah, but that that <laughs> blaming the student thing, right, for the issue that they're having, like mm. that that is not a good thing to do. If you're a teacher, don't do that, and if you're a student, and somebody does that to you, switch. Don't accept that. Yeah. So my my switch other brand ambassador like had that situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the I violist, like, right? The violist, right? We've talked so, about her before. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but this is when I when she told me this story, I was just dumbfounded. I thought this was like yeah. twenty years ago. This was like five years ago. This is recent. Mm-hmm. I, five, seven, whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't math well. So <laughs> this was, uh, she said, she said she was having, um, she's having a lot of pain. I don't remember exactly where she was having a lot of pain. And the teacher just kept telling her, well, you must not be very good. You must not be practicing enough. What? In what situation exactly. is it that if you have pain, you need to do more of the thing that's causing the pain to make the pain go away? That's just it's insane. That's not yeah. even, yeah, that's not even ignorance. That's just stupidity. Yeah. It's insanity. It's doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Right. So turns out her viola was the wrong size. How, what's with the string players? How does this teacher not realize that this viola is too big for this, this lady? Hello? Yeah. I, I couldn't believe that. So she, so she switched instruments. Pain's gone. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, but the now that's a toxic should... teacher right there. Too big yeah. of an ego. Blame yeah. the student. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But did she switch teachers? That's the question. I don't think so. Hmm. She should. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. Personal opinion. If it were me, I would be gone. Because that's not. Yeah, I do know she switched. Yeah, I do know she switched yeah. instruments. And that mm-hmm. solved the problem. So she, you know, advocated for herself and was like, yeah, that's not true. This, 
Yeah. But I, yeah, I would have switched too. I'm like, yeah. you know, it, there's a certain amount of blame that has to happen for you to be able to learn how to accept responsibility as a student, whatnot. But this also goes back to what Lee is saying. Right. Lee was talking about, right? Yeah. That the teachers, we've got this old school thing where the teachers know everything and the students just have to learn and not ask questions. I mean, how many times do yeah. teachers ask you questions? Right. Why not? Right. Because usually a sign of a good teacher who does ask you questions. That's usually a sign of a good teacher. Right. Because teachers don't know everything. They're not in no. your body. And, you know, we don't know what you do or don't know. So like I've had situations where, you know, I'm talking to a new student and I say something and I, I you know, like, do you understand? Yes. Okay. Well, a couple of lessons go by. We're talking about the same issue. And so I start asking more questions and more questions and more questions. It finally comes around. They didn't know the word I was using to begin with, but they just said, yes, they said, yes. Every time it came up every time it was something simple, like dynamics, like, I I don't know, like crescendo. They didn't know what a crescendo was. I thought they did because of, you know, their age and experience level. Nope. Like, but she said, yes. So I, (gasps) Oh, but if I hadn't asked more questions and just been like, well, you're just not practicing, you know, because it would have been easy, right? You know, you're working with a younger student that you don't know really how much time they're putting in or some, sometimes kids lie to you. They just do because they're too embarrassed. Yeah. Um, but it would have been so easy for me to be like, well, okay, you say you're practicing an hour a day, but you're not making these improvements. So clearly you're not and you're lying to me and now I'm going to blame you for not getting this right. And that wasn't the issue. I would never have known that if I hadn't started asking more questions. Sorry, my favorite, chair. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite example is when band directors tell flute players more support and flute players go, right. right. We have no idea what he's talking about. He never explains it, but we're just like, no, right. And then you right. ask the flute player, what does support mean? And they're like, more air from the diaphragm. Like they don't have no clue, right? Yeah. Where's your diaphragm? Right. But like they don't know. No. <laughs> Point at the shoulder. Yeah. You know, somewhere in the visceral middle of my body. What does it do? I don't. I, I don't know. How are you supporting? Right. Ah, uh, you know. But they just say it all the time. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. Yep. Constant. Yeah. I dealt with that all that. Like that happened this week. It wasn't about support, but I, you know, I talked to my my uh, woodwind group, and. I told them something and I'd said it a couple of times. And I was like, yeah, this, we're going to move the bar line over one. And they're like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, do you know what I mean? And no. Oh, so if I hadn't have said that, like which bar yeah. line? They didn't know. Right. If I hadn't spelled it out and asked them, do you get it? They would have just said, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And they would not have said, well, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we, like what Lee is saying is we've got to put the responsibility back on the teachers to start asking the questions to make sure you understand, because it's not always the, it's, it's a two-way street. Everybody's got to ask yeah. questions. You don't get it. Ask. Teacher yeah. has to make sure you understand, not just assume. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not a, I'm not telling you what to do. This is a conversation. That's the only, I mean, this is not, and, and uh, I'm going to tangent just a little bit, just a little bit. It's related. I promise. Uh, <laughs> but I this, tangent all the time. Goes, Go for it. It goes back to um, public school system from day one. From day one, I tell you the thing, you repeat it back to me. And that's what's rewarded from day one. Mm -hmm. Like to the point where um, I'm going to kind of out myself here, but like I had a conversation at um, the gym because a gym I coach out of, um, a lot of college kids go there. A lot of older people go there. But the owner was talking to one of the college kids and I was, you know, prepping my class or something. I don't remember what I was doing. And they go, because they knew I, I, you know, have my doctorate taught, taught at FSU for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jen, are you any good at English? It's like, because, of course, they're like portraying the meathead stereotype of like, oh, no, we don't do, we, we, we lift things. We're strong, not smart, you know. <laughs> like, actually... I am. And actually English is really, because they were talking about creative writing and how hard we're not creative writing, but um, standard English 101, 102 essay production. You have to do this sort of paper, blah, blah, blah. You have to 
read a book and report on it. Actually, I am good at it. And it's actually really easy. If you're actually thinking it's really easy. Because the problem that a lot of people have with the English classes is that they think that, you know, it's, it's not the same as the math and the science where they tell you something and then you spit the answer back at them. Mm. Okay, but you can do it with English too. If you know what the instructor or the test or the board wants to hear, you just tell them what they want to hear, whether you agree with it or not. <laughs> and that's, that's how it goes. But that's how you survive and how you excel in that sort of kind of messed up system. So then we get into music kids. I I know there's this stereotype from non-musicians that we're not very smart. Same sort of thing with the meatheads, right? We're like, we're strong, not smart. We're musicians. We're creatives. We're not smart. No, we're all Excel kids. Like, (laughs) we're all the nerdy brainiac. I say it all the time. I mean, everybody's got their weak subjects, right? So same thing, like we've got people who are good at history and people who are good at theory in music. Yeah. Like we've got people who are good at math, people who are good at English, right? I'm in the history camp, just going to put myself out there. But I'm in the English <laughs> camp. I tell yeah, my clients, same, don't ask me. Same camps. Yeah. Don't ask me to count <laughs> Math is <for> theory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a musician. I count to four. But, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So we're coming from this background where from day one, you're, you're taught, okay, teacher's going to tell you something. You tell them the same thing back. You don't speak up and you don't act out because that's bad and then you're not going to get to go to recess right and then you got a school, music school full of excel kids who i'm sure they're calling it something different now i might be aging excel myself. kids you uh, mean like excel accelerated spreadsheet? accelerated oh sorry i was thinking like yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids. no i didn't see yeah. i didn't you didn't, you didn't you assumed i knew and i didn't I, yeah i'm like i'm realizing as i'm saying i'm like oh this is an age term i think they're calling them id kids now or something i don't know what they're calling them anymore But the advanced students who are pretty much all going to get straight A's. So, of course, if you've learned that that's the system and you've figured out the English trick, like you just tell the teacher what they want to hear, whether you agree with it or understand it or not. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to come in, even with a good teacher who wants to help, with that sort of mindset. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Heck, I remember I was at App State and there was this was it was I think it was like the psychology of music class I think all I remember was we came in it was a dark room and we sat on the floor with pillows you know where I'm going with this right and I was like well this is kind of nice what is the point of this class and he would have us Mm -hmm. read these books and write some stuff and looking back now I get some of it and I really wish I'd kept a couple of those books there was a um there was, a, there was a book that we read called Effortless Mastery, I think. And another okay. book we called, uh, it was The Perfect Wrong Note, I think. And that was really great. <laughs> I think those are pedagogical books. Um, it's, but it's more also about learning. But there was, I don't, it, this, is, this is back in honestly 04. So this has been a minute, so I don't remember. But I do remember the feeling I got was, this is too soft for me. <laughs> that's why I didn't join, that's why I didn't join the Air Force too soft. I, like, Army, I like you people move with a sense of purpose. <laughs> right? That's exactly what happened. But in this class, I was just like, this, this is all touchy feely, but this is a class. What am I supposed to be learning? So I, I don't remember right. what it was, but he had us write these papers. And I was like, this is stupid. I don't want to be here. Whatever. I'm going to write exactly what I, he asked these questions. I was like, fine. I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. And I expected to give lambast support and I didn't. He was like, this is great or great work. Love this idea. I'm like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. Like, I, had a I couple did not understand. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love those kind of instructors. It's I like, mean, oh I my. get him now. <laughs> but then I was just like, I don't understand this paradigm, this model. What's going on here? Like, what reality am I in? Because I just didn't come from that, right? Yeah, I get it yeah. now, but right. But I mean, that it is really a mind boggling experience when you come from the background we talked about. And then you're like, there's an instructor who actually cares what I think. Yeah, he and didn't tear okay me down. Like, you're not beating me up for, you know, just like that, you get that concerned 
face. Like, <laughs> like what do you mean? Like, <laughs> right? And that's, that's just, it's crazy that that's, that that's uh, the student approach, right? Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I, I don't have any problem, as y'all <laughs> can probably tell, telling authority figures what I think. <laughs> I think, I, this is my life. This is, you know, I get one of them. I'm not set on this earth to please you. Sorry, <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> you know, I mean, not trying to be like a jerk or, you know, have too big of an ego, but at the same time, it's like, look, I know why I'm here. My, my goal here, I'm going to get this degree because I want to learn these things. Yeah. And I have no problem bucking right. that system. If I'm not learning, this is my money, my life, my degree. I'm not going to waste my time. You yeah. should know this. If I don't tell you, you don't know. That's yeah. the way I look at it. I should probably like, I'm also, well, not awesome at tax. So there's that. <laughs> I mean, there's benefits to that too. Like I've dug myself into holes multiple times because I'm a little too tactful. Was, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Like, I'm You're getting moving a, on the other way. We're, we're meeting in the middle here. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a lot better. But I mean, like when I was younger, I don't know, whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. Uh, like, do, we, do I care that I'm up until 6 a.m.? No. Oh, like the, <laughs> the perfect, like the straight A student approach. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I will do. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> this reminds me was... of what we referenced in, again in Lee's episode. I think that I think I mentioned this where um, when I got to FSU, which is funny, I feel like everybody in the world's gone to FSU at this point. We're like, oh, me too. But <laughs> I, <laughs> it was in the lesson with Ava and she goes, Angela, you have mm-hmm. not to please me. I was like, right. What? What do you mean? What? No, you're the chief. But ah, like, my brain just exactly exploded in front of her. I'd like, right. ah, what do right. you do with that? Right. She right. Because not only is she your teacher and you're coming from that paradigm, but she's the teacher you picked. So like, yeah, no, I actually want to please. <laughs> like, no, you have not to. Like, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I love her accent. So, yes. but that was a good teacher. And she's like, look, yeah. like, I'll never forget when she, she, uh, she assigned us this book of etudes and she was like, you will perform these for me. They will be memorized. I don't care how long it takes. Mm-hmm. Took me a year to do the first one, a whole year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was so pleased. She was so excited. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> well done. I'm very proud of you. You took your own time and you found your own way to do it. And it doesn't matter how long it took. You did it your way. You know, I was yeah. like, ah! and it's not like you want this memorized by next week. I mean, right. That, Cause that wasn't the point. Right. The point was all the other stuff in between. And she was really trying to shift all this stuff that I had mm-hmm. learned on how to be and how to please other people. Because I same way, like, I really liked for the teacher to like me. I really wanted to get that grade. I wanted to do, yeah. I mean, I took voice lessons and, and I just kept cha- like trying to sing in a way I, the, the teacher, I thought the teacher wanted me to. And he kept telling me, no, 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 did, where's your voice? And I just went, I don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. And I had no idea. So when I get to Ava and she, she was really trying to shift me out of that, but she knew it would take some time. And it did. Yeah. And after that first year, I was so like, confident and just calm about it and like I knew yeah. what was expected like she wasn't gonna let me get away with crap right like, you know there was that's that because she balance. had that yeah that balance between the too soft too hard that that media the Goldilocks firmness like <laughs> it was on that medium plush bed right there <laughs> you, know? you know like but that's what you have to have to develop a person we're not developing clarinetists or flutists or you're developing a person. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think um, it's a good time for a break though. If you... I think so. I think so. We got a little off track. So it's all right. <laughs> when we come back, we'll get back on track. <laughs> hey musicians, did you know that up to 90% of musicians will experience playing related pain or injury over the course of their career? How many hushed conversations have you heard about a lingering quote shoulder pain or a weird tingling in your fingers? or maybe low back pain, or a crampy weakness, or maybe you or your colleague just says, I just have to get through the gig. 
and you watch them pop Advil like candy, maybe flush it down with whiskey. How many times have we seen something like this? So many, right? Well, it's time we start talking about our struggles, our pain, our frustrations in a private space where we don't just complain and mobilize and blindly stretch, but we learn how to strengthen our muscles, our career successes, and build each other up. I've got a brand new program that combines all of these things, and I want you to be a part of it. It's a community, not a workout. It's a community with group coaching and great content that in 12 weeks will have you understanding more about your body, what you need, and how you work so you can avoid that career-threatening injury. The three things that musicians don't want. We don't want to be injured. We don't want to have a lack of stamina. And we don't want to be clueless, aka when you hurt, who do you go see? Just a quote doctor? Well, this program addresses all of those things. You're going to walk away with an immense knowledge of who to see. You're going to be empowered because you're going to know what to do should you ever get injured or should you have a colleague that gets injured. You will be able to actually offer appropriate advice. You're also going to learn about the body and the anatomy as it relates to playing your instrument and your own anatomy. And then you're going to learn how to build not just your strength and endurance, but you're going to learn how to design your own corrective exercise program. So I hope you will join me in this new program. It's called the Music Strong Pilot Program, Job Security for Musicians. So welcome back. And we were just talking about the student perspective when it comes to teaching and having that experience. And now we want to kind of segue over onto the teacher's perspective, what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. And and we can start that out with, I mean, just listing off some traits that a couple of them we've mentioned and a couple that we haven't. Um, I mean, blaming, obviously we covered that one. That's, a, that's just, honestly, it's just mean spirited. I don't know why people are mean like that. Usually it's something unrelated, but I think it has to do with insecurity. Yeah, often, often, or I don't know what else. Um, So blaming is a big one. Laziness we talked about with the the one who really should just retire at this point. Like if you hate it, just just retire. It's okay. Um, But there are lazy teachers out there who just, they got themselves into it and they couldn't figure out how to get out. And somehow they ended up getting a job. Or they're private instructors who are working externally. Um, so I think we all know what that, I mean, if the teacher is not paying attention to you, if they're kind of like, yeah, just go do this, but they're not really giving you feedback, uh, run away because that's, I mean, if they're telling you things too, like, oh, well, you need to do, um, this number of etudes every single day and this number of studies and, this, and like, these are the books and there's no deviation from this. That's lazy too. That was my very first private teacher. I'd ask her That's questions awesome. and she would just say, practice. Right. Oh, answer. just go practice this. Oh, just go practice that. And not okay. how to practice it. Mm-mm. Right. Just, oh, not you need to do these experience. studies. You need to go and go through the Rubank book. <sighs> Rubank is a good tool, but yeah. you have to know how to use it. I, there's not a single, we've talked about this. I don't remember which episode it was, but there, oh, it was the one with Brian Witkowski, the curation of materials. Um, as a private instructor, yeah, there's not a single book that I use that I don't alter the approach compared to what it's presented as. You know, oh, yeah. there's not one. Yeah. Um, so laziness is a big one, and that's just people who are burnt out, which the system can do to you. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of what I see from people is their own negative habits creeping through, things that they do to cope that they then expect their students to do. Um, like, okay, well, you have to practice a certain number of hours every single day. And it's a lot of hours, a lot of hours. We're not talking. That's a lot for a win player. And why? Right. Right. I never got got an answer. Never got an answer. I'm like, why? Well, the answer I got from, uh, that sort of approach was that, because that's how many it takes to actually make improvement and not just maintain. According to what? According to that person's, I'm going to call it experience, but it's a fear thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a fear thing. Um, you're being challenged and no, not fear hearing of, the answer? 
imposter syndrome, fear of not actually being good enough to do their own job. Got it. So habits that like, well, if you have, you know, this long of a day and you haven't gotten your four hour practice in then, or your six hours of practice or whatever crazy number it was, well, you're going to be drinking coffee so that you can stay up late so that you can practice. And then you take whatever you need to get to sleep after that, but then you're going to be exhausted the next day. So you're going to drink a bunch of coffee again. Um, and that, that's, I mean, you got to think, even if that instructor is not pushing the students to do that themselves, you know, because I've seen this before with instructors who do that sort of thing, but they're very much like when they're working with their students, don't do that. You need to take care of yourself. You need to X, Y, Z, but that's not what they're seeing. They're looking at you as their model. You've made it right. You're the instructor. You've made it in the business. What are you doing to survive? What do you have to do to, in order to make it? And if that's the kind of thing that they see on a regular basis, whether or not you want them to copy you, they're going to. Mm -hmm. That can be a problem. Even more of a problem because there are people out there who will combine that with blame. Oh, well, you didn't, you didn't get enough time in, so obviously you should have done this other thing. Instead of like, no, I had two hours left to sleep. You know? <laughs> Right. Sleep comes above all else. I'm sorry. If it yeah. should, it's like if right. you're not, if you're, I don't have to say this, but if you're not sleeping, you're not performing. You're not. You're not at your full potential. You're not learning. You're not cognizant. You're not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Especially when it becomes chronic sleep debt, you yes. cannot make that up. Technically, no, no. It, it can't be done. And. I mean, I, I was always told, oh, yeah, sleep is important. Sleep is important. And you think, oh, yeah, because then I'm going to be alert, right? No, it's not just that. It's that what the human brain requires in order to process the information that you're trying to get yourself to learn. It is not optional. Six hours is not enough. Six hours is not enough. Nine. <laughs> we talked about that, what we, what we need. You know, and that can change. That can mm -hmm. definitely change yeah. throughout your life. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's not like, okay, well, every single night, I'm obviously going to get a minimum of eight or nine hours of sleep. That's not realistic. But if your habit is like, yeah, six hours is a full night, and I'm really getting four or five on an average, you're doing yourself a major disservice. So, but toxic teacher traits, that that's that like, when the instructor is so afraid they're not going to get everything done or maybe they had a bad model like you're passing that down and that is a toxic trait if you're teaching your students not to take care of themselves either through what you're telling them or through just poor modeling you know what i mean yeah like it took for me a difference in model mm -hmm. um like pros and cons here pros and cons um i have no problem with a particular instructor that I worked with who lived at the music school for all intents and purposes. Um, very, very tight knit group. I loved that. At the same time, I never understood that I could take some personal space to have a personal life that didn't involve the studio mm. until I had that modeled for me. No, I'm not taking calls at this time. What? Yeah. It was bizarre. It yeah. was weird. Oh, no, we can talk about it. Like, look, nine hours, 10 hours isn't going to make a difference. We'll talk about it in the morning. It's okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, I had a teacher say that. He goes, there is no such thing as an academic emergency. Yeah. You do not call me. I'm putting my <laughs> phone number here in case you're in the hospital. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is no such thing. You do not call me. There was no yeah. texting at that point. So he's like, you do not call me. Yeah. End of story. Unless you're dying, unless you're in the hospital, unless you had an accident, but because your printer ran out of ink and now you can't do your paper. Not my problem. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. You do not call me outside of whatever. You can talk to me here. That is fine. And you can email me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I am not available. Mm -hmm. Whoa. That was the very first time I'd ever seen that thought. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. 
And you know, the other neat part about instructors I've worked with who are like that, I had a theory guy like that. Like we said, I'm bad at theory. So I was freaking out because I had worked and worked and worked and worked on this paper. And I, I'm like, the night before I'm going, I thought that I was going to be able to finish this and I'm missing this key piece of information. I'm reading it over and over in my book, like Googling the crap out of it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I can't figure it out. And I go in with this like 80% complete paper and I'm like, his office hours were right before the class too. Yeah. Like freaking out, like, oh my God, this is a major paper. I'm going to fail the class. No, went in, tried to talk, you know, tried to figure it out, whatever. And came out of it with, you know, once I understood the piece of the puzzle I was missing. Okay. So take that. I'll give you 48 hours. Get it back to me. You can drop it in my box here. There you go. What? Like, <laughs> what? <Right. laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's that. When you take care of your personal time, you give your students permission to do it too. And when you don't, mm -hmm. they're going to model that too. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So you yeah, got the so other. We... Yeah, go down. Go down what you're saying. I'm sorry. I no. Got so we've of... got <laughs> we've got that. We've got fear based. You know, there there's mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, really, is imposter syndrome when you're thinking, you know, yeah. fear of being challenged. Also, you get ego. Yes. That can uh -huh. come from imposter syndrome. Often um, does. Can from from fear from a fear of inadequacy, but it can also you know like just being insecure. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, I'm the teacher. I have the answers and I will give you an answer. There is no such thing as I don't know. Right. There's, right. you know, I mean, I deal with that as a trainer. Mm -hmm. I have these clients who come in. They're like, why does this hurt? Like, I don't know. Right. But, but sometimes it's like, I feel like I should know. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's real tough. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not in your body. Why does your kneecap hurt? I don't know. What were the last, what'd you do for the last week? Mm -hmm. I, what'd you do for the last 40 days? I didn't live in your body. I don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. It can be a whole mm -hmm. pile of things. I got one right. client. I love her to pieces. She comes in every week with something. Yesterday it was her hamstring. It's always her hamstring. Um, hamstring and her ankles are swollen and the outside of her knee hurts. And, 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 and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, I finally got to the point. I mean, I used to sit there and figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. Just, I got to, I got to give an answer. And then I finally went, I don't, I don't have all the answers. I'm not going to have all the answers. It's okay. And I would finally just say, I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. We're going to do what we can't. Like I had a, I had a client come in yesterday yeah. and he had mm -hmm. a, he had an issue and it totally threw off my whole plan for the day, which is fine. But I was just like, Oh Man, I've been training you for years, but at this point I see him for a half hour once every other week. I don't remember a lot. Yeah. And he's doing a whole bunch on his own. And I'm just like, I Yeah, you got to help me out here, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know. And so I just did the best I could, but you know, and he's not holding that against me. I mean, I don't Right. Because if you set as a teacher, um and trainers are kind of, can be teachers too, but it's like if you set yeah, yourself absolutely. up to know all the answers, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's much better to yeah. set yourself up to be okay with saying, I don't know. Yeah. It opens up so many things, just being able to say, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. first off, it takes the pressure off of you. It feels like it's going to be the opposite. You know, it feels like, oh my God, they're going to question my judgment. You know, they're going to question this, that, and that. But if you say, I don't know, it can be, I don't know, but I have some theories. I don't know end of story. I don't know. You'd have to look at, you know, X, Y, Z, or I just don't know. It's not something that I do. Or I don't know, but let's find yeah. out together. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know. And you need to go see somebody else about this. Yep. Those are all totally valid. You know, but it, it takes that you don't have to give a fake answer and be wrong or be upset because somebody has asked you a question, you're mm -hmm. actually more helpful. And usually people trust you more because you're honest enough. To, I don't know, but I still want to help you. So here's how we're going to do it. Yeah. Whether that's with me or not. That, honestly, you know? that's what I told the bass player today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, I was referred to you by so-and-so I have this problem. I was like, 
okay, well, can you call me? So he called and he told me all these things. And I'm just, the more he talks to me, the more I realize it's really about his hand. It's not about instability yeah. up the chain and all these other things, as far as I can tell. And so, you know, I just let him talk and I listened and I was like, that is outside my scope of practice. It's not what I do. I don't mm-hmm. know the answer here, but you know what? I don't want to leave you hanging with less answers than you showed up right. with. Right. Can I, I'm actually about to walk in to my hand therapist who is also a musician and understands, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can I ask her some questions and can you send me some pictures and can I get back to you? Because yeah. I don't want to just leave you hanging with less, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so that, I mean, just because you have to refer out, doesn't mean you, doesn't mean also you're less, you're not supposed to know everything. No, you know, right. That's why we have, that's why we have specialties. Yeah. You know? Like we have orchestra performance specialists, chamber music specialists. We have Baroque flute specialists, mm-hmm. right? Like <laughs> there are people who play the heck out of a keyboard. There are uh-huh. people who play who are just like concert grand is all they ever touch. And there's people who are right. like harpsichord is life. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Right. And you don't see a crossover between jazz and classical or jazz and rock or rock and classical. Like very, very, very rare. Do you see anything like that? Oh, I found one today though. They we exist. <laughs> I found we exist. Yeah, yeah but, they exist. They exist. Especially in guitar players. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So so we're willing to accept though that people specialize. Yeah. Most of the time they hyper specialize in like that the one little thing that they do. Which is great. We honestly. accept that. But like, if you're going to go, um, so like, obviously I've got background enough to know I can get you started with a solid setup on the clarinet as a beginner. I can get you to intermediate. I got advice for advanced stuff. I got professional, pre-professional, all that. I have basics and pretty good basics, pretty good above basics. But if you're really going to dive hardcore into it, really like, okay, well, what about this advanced thing and this other thing that, you know, is, is out in left field and, I'm going to send you to somebody else that I know, depending on what you're asking. I've got three or four friends and I'm going to yeah. say, go talk to them because I'm just not that big into gear. It's awesome. There's a lot of cool stuff, but it's not my jam. You want to talk about crossover classical clarinet into jazz. I got you. You want to talk about doubling. I got you. You want to talk about strength. That's my jam. Don't go talk to the gear people about strength. They don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Yeah. It's so okay to why... have a special Right. Why would we then hesitate when somebody says, you know, somebody, a student challenges you on like, well, what about this thing? If it was gear, I'd send a student to a friend. Why is it if they were to challenge me on, I don't know, breathing? Yeah. With something that I didn't, well, what about this thing? Yeah. If I say, I don't know, really? I'm going to say, I don't know and be upset and like, not going to say, no, I'm not going to say it. How dare you ask? Really? <laughs> yeah let's get off the blame train huh yeah and just yeah it, it's yeah we're all human mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. there is a limit to the knowledge we have and that is okay it's that's a why good thing. It's, that's why, why it's we're good tribal. to know people with other special that's why we're tribal <laughs> <laughs> right so. that's why it's like as a trainer this is why it's good to have a referral network with a massage therapist a chiropractor mm-hmm. an acupuncturist or whatever your mm-hmm. your clients seem to want or need mm-hmm. you don't have to know that so you can refer them but you're yeah. not losing them you're helping them extra right you know yeah. they still need yeah. this but they need this too or they need this more or they need this first right Instead of them, you just saying, I don't know, and you never see them again, or you yeah. trying to figure it out and messing them up. You don't want right. to do that either. No, no. And it's the same to, to kind of bring it maybe to something that's, I mean, obviously we understand this. A lot of people are going to, but if you don't, I know you're going to understand taking lessons with, a, with somebody who's not your instructor. There's two reactions to that typically. One is, how dare you study with somebody else? Mm. it's really old school it's becoming less common but there are people who are really sensitive like oh how dare you how dare you go behind my back that's fear right there that's fear, fear. they're gonna be challenged uh-huh and there's mm-hmm. people like me who i'm like yeah go talk to them come tell me what they said i want to know what they heard right absolutely it's entirely possible that we hear the same thing and we're just triaging it differently yeah heck i tell my Probably. students hey <laughs> Go take as many lessons with other people as yeah. possible. You need to go to this flute day. You need to go to this master class. You need to go to these exactly. things. 
because you need more than my perspective. I am one person. Mm -hmm. Not that there isn't too far of an extreme to that where you're getting too many opinions, but like, man, if you're just sticking to one person, that's a problem. Yeah. Cause I, I feel that like, that's the exception though. Like it's a rare person who's doing too. I've seen it in before, music, in, in fitness, music, yeah, all day. All time. Yeah. Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Uh-huh. What about this? Did you do what I told you in the first place? Well, what about this? Yeah. Bye. Like you've got to, you've got to settle on one thing and give mm-hmm. it a shot for a while. Not a day, not mm-hmm. two days, mm-hmm. not a week, try a month, try a couple of weeks or whatever the thing is. Right. I mean, you know, and that's extremely broad, but like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've always, have you ever had these clients that come in and they're like, Hey, what about keto? Hey, have you heard about, well, what about, uh-huh. what about assisted uh-huh. stretching? Well, what about Pilates? Uh-huh. What about Adkins? Hey, you know, what's this thing with, with butter in your coffee? I'm like, just things, you know, and they just go on and on and on with the shake weight. You know? <laughs> just, hey, I saw this thing in Walmart the other day, constant. I'm like, you're yeah. here. Right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You exactly. tell me what you need. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you told me those things. You, you don't need any of whatever that is. Or right. that's a great thing. I'm glad you asked. You also might want to check this out, but keep it right. to these two or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> these people who just go from right. There, they just hop. Yeah. yeah. And they're not going to get any results on anything because yeah. they don't stick with it long. No. Yeah. That's shoot. I've got people I've been working with for a good, good long time. Love to pieces, but a couple of them, a couple times have come in and been like, oh yeah. So I started going to the, um, you know, the purple gym or the youth or whatever it is on my off days. And I was wondering, I don't feel good doing this, that, and the other at the, at the other gym. And I'm like, okay, you need to tell me this. I'm glad you're telling me this because my three day a week, I'm like, we're working off a baseline of you're only coming to see me three days a week. So I'm building it that you're not good. If you're doing anything on your off days, it's recovery. Right. That's how the program is built. It's not a five-day program. It's three days. I want you to walk maybe or bike ride or something like yes. light, not, not For hard. Example. Not sprints, you know? Exactly. <laughs> or, or like I've had the same program myself. It's like, Hey, I want to, I want to hire a trainer to do my strength training. So I don't want to think about me. I think about everybody else. I want someone else to think about my program. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. But Hey, I'm also doing this program because I want to work up to doing a hundred mile bike ride. I want to get back to this. So I'm doing this endurance thing. Okay. So those don't have to compete, but if I can tell the coach that I hire that I'm doing this thing, they can appropriately (laughs) tailor the program. Yeah. (sighs) There's nothing wrong with that, but you can't just go from thing to thing that's right. Right. Teacher to teacher, to teacher, to teacher, but take, take, you know, that's a tangent for another time, but yeah. <laughs> but the instructors who are going to fight you on even a little bit of outside opinion, those are the ones you got to kind of, you got to run out. away from. That's, that's some imposter stuff right there. Um, I mean, there are a couple that are, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of a few that, well, no, I don't even know that about them. So, you know, there's a few that are probably really, really old. Like, look, I've been around here for a long time. If you're coming to study, you're coming to study with me. I got some stuff. I got some stuff to talk about some stuff to teach you. And you don't need all these other things confusing you. Yes. Now that would be a that's, healthy perspective. Right. That's trying to eliminate outside noise. That's when you get into the too much. But if that same person is like, you have an opportunity to study with another master for one lesson and they have a problem oh. with it. That's when we get into the issue. Mm-hmm. So just think yeah. about that. When, yeah. yeah. How do you, well, do you know your teacher? How, yeah. you know. How open is your teacher? Not not necessarily about personal life because there are, there are ones who are like way too much like, oh yeah, here was the date that I went on last night. And like, I mean, no, don't need to inappropriate, that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like how emotionally open are they to right. conversing with you? Do they want to know about you? Do they want to know what you think, what you feel, what you're here, what you're like, and not like, oh, tell me every detail about your life, but like stuff that's relevant. Yeah. The building that foundation of trust. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I you're an open, open person. Mind. I'm not talking <laughs> about dates I go on. That's none you. Right. But <laughs> right. Yeah. But like I had a lesson with them um, with mine on Tuesday. You know, I love telling these these kids that I'm teaching. I love telling them stories from, you know, all different types of different things that I've done or what happened. And, you know, like why, what I don't remember the, the thing that we were talking about this week, but like personal stuff like, hey, let me tell you how my dad taught me to drive on ice. 
you might <laughs> want to know this. And so this is, yeah. that, that is a hilarious story that involves driving through the middle, like doing donuts in the church parking lot and dad telling me, when I tell you, you better floor it. Like what? You know? Yeah. And you're going to turn it this way. I'm like, we're going to die. <laughs> Then he goes, there's a cop coming. We got to leave. And so we like head out in town and uh, I hope he's not listening. (laughs) (laughs) He might be. (laughs) We head out in town and there's nobody around and there's ice all over the roads. This is, this is Columbia, Tennessee guys. This is, there's no snow y'all. It is like three inches of ice. It was bad. (laughs) We're driving down and I'm like staying in the lane and staying in the grooves. And he pulls the e-brake, the emergency brake or the handbrake for the Brits. Um, and we go fishtailing and he's like, fix it. <laughs> I'm like, I got it. I got it. He goes, yeah, I get shot. And we just pulled it out of nowhere. And it's, it's teaching me how to pull, like pull out of skids and fishtails. Really valuable. And there was, got, this was like 10 PM. And, you know, yeah. there'd been an ice storm. Nobody was on the road. Nobody. We're yeah. not going to go yeah. flying into it. But I've had some courage on my dad's part, honestly. Yeah. Take your 15 year old out like that. So, you yeah, know, like <laughs> sharing that kind of stuff with my students. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You need mm-hmm. to know this. Right. But that's a foundation for a personal relationship where exactly. you can build that, build that trust. So like the students can't talk personal. to you. Yeah. Not too personal. No, you don't need to get that. No. But it's just enough, just the right kind of material that like mm-hmm. they feel like they know you. They feel like they can talk to you. Yeah. You know, I talk about my cats all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need to. I need to show pictures. Like, Let me see your doggy. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Pets are a great one. Um, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh heck, we had a we had a conversation in our our woodland class the other day about TikTok. I'm like, do you guys watch the lady with the useless farm? And they're like, the oh, is that the lady who's got the emu? And I'm like, yeah, dude. You know, it's just you know, TikTok is my brainless, mindless entertainment. I like, just laugh at the end of the night. I know it's terrible. You're not supposed to do it before you go to bed. So what? <laughs> I mean, like, fine. If you can, if you can make it make you happy. Oh, it's so it's, funny. I mean, the stuff I watch is so funny. Yeah. It's when you're out of control with it, right? We've talked about it's when you're out of control with it or when you're ingesting nothing but negative stuff. This is a total tangent. <laughs> <laughs> But it's fine. So like that kind of yeah. thing, I think my students feel like they could, um, they, they could, they could come talk to me about anything and be cool. And I'd be cool. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, I, I'm not so like, I do ask that they call me Ms. McHouston, like mm-hmm. the teachers there and like, Oh, this is Angela. I'm like, hi, I'm Ms. McHouston. Right. You do not call your teachers by their first name. Little respect. Right. I mean, but Didn't we have an episode on this. Me probably. I feel like we did. Probably. I mean, I'm I feel like it was one of our know. earlier ones where it was really like, early. Know, yeah. Really early. But, but that, you yeah. know, you're, you're taking a position of um, you're establishing yourself in that role is what you're doing. And that's, right. that's fine. It's not an ego thing. It's like a, this is the relationship dynamic we have to establish. You have to know that I am, <laughs> I am the teacher here. We're not colleagues. Yeah. We can be it's friendly, like, but yeah. It's not yeah. like your friend, you know, who right. may or may not have good advice. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There, there has to be that, that kind of boundary there. So I think like yeah. first name basis and then uh, when you graduate, sure. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> when Ava told me, there's another tangent a little bit, but when I graduated, um, I would go back to talk to her and she's like, Angela, how long you call me Professor Angela? I was like, <laughs> forever. She's like, why well, you don't call me Ava? You can call me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, Ava, I felt so wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, now she's she's like, we're colleagues, we're colleagues now, right? So I was like, <laughs> I guess you still know more than me. But I mean, you know, like that's that's a good healthy relationship, right? But it, it's that is a you're you are maturing the student, yeah, right. right. There's a there's a point at which you are now on the other side of this fence and there's mm-hmm. extra responsibilities. And that's part of that. You know, that's that not being too soft thing. <laughs> yeah. So um, there was one more imposter syndrome related one that I wanted to talk about before we kind of wrap things up here. Mm-hmm. Um, and that one is one that I think we talked about um, 
we sort of danced around it, but I never, I wrote the words down, but we didn't talk about it. Um, and that is fear of self-replication. Self-replication? Self-replication. So when you have, when you're an instructor and you have a particular issue that you are afraid of, you don't want to talk about it, but you have this particular issue and you're afraid of it. So when you have the student in front of you, you hyper fixate on the potential of the same issue. And it's in this really bad way because you personally have a really bad relationship with this particular problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this is, and I'm not at all blaming, um, this is no, no way blaming uh, Mark's teacher, his first one who focused on his embouchure so heavily. He was talking to us right, about his right. embouchure focal dystonia and, you know, <clears throat> he was saying that he didn't know he had a problem until he was told like, well, your embouchure looks weird. And the more they worked on it, the worse, the worse things got. Um, and then it comes out years and years and years later that that instructor has embouchure focal dystonia and hasn't been able to play for years because of it. So student has or does not have a problem or has the potential for a problem, but you don't know what it is. But I'm, I'm not blaming this instructor. I'm just saying that if that embouchure was an issue and the instructor hadn't been able to resolve that issue on their own, mm -hmm. it might have been something to refer out. Mm hmm. I don't think that's what that was at all. I don't, I, I think that was a, that was an old pedagogical thing. You know, like back in the yeah. day, flute players were told you must, I've seen these old books from like the fifties, these, these method mm -hmm. books, your embouchure must look exactly like this and it has to be perfect yeah. around and, blah, blah, blah. and then you see these people who are side blowers like, oh, you're a side blower. Yeah. Who cares where you put the hole in your mouth to blow on the tube? Does it right. make a good sound? Okay. So, but maybe there was a whole thing entirely possible then that that was the issue. I think so. I bring that up because it was the one that came to mind. I've seen it done with other issues mm -hmm. when the instructor is afraid of something in their own personal life, in their own personal habits, in their own personal playing, hyper fixating it on it in the student, and really just it instead of avoiding it, it ends up being gas on the flames. Mm -hmm. Not always. I feel like usually if it's um, an instructor has an issue that they're afraid of that they focus on, but they're open about it with a student, like, Hey, this is something I'm dealing with. And that's why I'm concerned about it. That tends to come from that. The approach tends to be healthier. It tends to not be as much of an issue over time, yeah. but I've seen it before with, it's like, you don't realize it when you're in it, you have to come out the other side and looking back and going, okay, well, I know this instructor now, Right. And so some of these people I'm talking about, they're, they're colleagues. They're not people I've worked under. Yeah. Um, but you have to kind of know them well enough to go. You're really fixating on this and you're really just making your student hyper fixate and they're, they're getting worse. And it's because you're so upset with this issue in yourself. If this is something that you know as a teacher or a person that you deal with, or you want more information on it, there is a wonderful book by Debbie Ford called Chasing the Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Uh, it goes into learning how to, like anything that you really have a pet peeve about is something you really don't like about yourself. Yeah. And learning all that kind of stuff can help you not do that with students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a really, really great resource if, uh, if you're looking to, you're like, oh, that's me. Uh, or, oh, I know that's somebody who did that. That's a, that's a really excellent resource. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, I think we covered it all. I hope, well, you know, as much as we, we can. covered. Yeah. We covered a lot. I mean, outside of openly verbally abusive, which I feel like doesn't need to be covered. No. If your teacher I mean, is calling you stupid, quit, get a yeah. different teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there's a friend of mine. She, she and I went to undergrad together. We did all this stuff together in high school, went to undergrad, different masters. Um, I came to FSU and then she would, she came, she went to do her masters somewhere in like St. Louis or something. She came back to FSU to do her doctorate and she was just broken. She was a yeah. mess, a yeah. mess. Like she got in, but she was just a mess. And I totally felt the opposite. Like I wasn't feeling like I was in competition with her. I was very calm, confident, like found mm -hmm. myself. Um, right. 
she was a mess and it came from her teacher. And what she told me is that that teacher just destroyed her, broke her down. Um, It just, I don't remember all the things, but it's like, what's your point as a teacher doing that kind of thing? How are you helping them? How are you setting them up for success? If that is how they leave your studio with a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Not even with a degree. That's how they leave your studio. Right. What, What have you put into the world? Right. Not okay. Some people, I mean, we've talked about this a little bit too. Some people, maybe it's some imposter syndrome stuff, but some people, I don't know if it's that they think that they're trying to toughen people up or what, and others just don't, they don't even know that they're doing it. And mm-hmm. part of that's with the student, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, um, sure. they don't say anything. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, there's, there's one particular relationship that I'm thinking of, um, where the student was very sensitive Mm -hmm. and the teacher is very blunt. I never had a problem working with this instructor because I like people who are direct. I can handle that, you know, (laughs) Yeah. as long as you're not intentionally trying to hurt me. Right. I can handle that. You can be very direct. Um, And that was, that was this instructor was not trying to be hurtful, just extremely direct. Mm -hmm. And the student just was not, able to handle with that very much needed because of previous experiences a much softer touch mm-hmm. well if the student didn't say anything how was this ever going to get resolved because the teacher doesn't know right so yeah this is i mean it's tough because we're putting the impetus on the teachers right to be more interactive more engaged with the students ask more questions all of which is true at the same time, students, you gotta you gotta be thinking about stuff like this too. If you're listening, like <laughs> you gotta be thinking about this sort of stuff. You gotta be willing to talk to your teachers, ask questions, and um, like if it's not a good fit, if it, if the teacher is straight up toxic or abusive, or if it's just not working, like you gotta be ready to switch. Same like with doctors, with practitioners. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Oh, yeah. I mean, no. sure there's, there's a, but I mean, yeah, this is your life and your mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, this is you. So yeah. you want to make the most I mean, of it and there's no reason you should deal with abuse or any of that other right. stuff. If you don't want to burn out and be miserable, yeah. you got to advocate. Yeah. Well, we've danced around this topic for long enough. So I'm really glad we kind of, we actually not kind of, we actually addressed it. So love yeah. to know you if you guys are listening, um, if you are listening, which I know you are. Um, (laughs) we would love to know know your thoughts. So feel free to, Mm -hmm. uh, leave us a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. And by the way, we're sorry about Jen's camera. We don't know why the autofocus and the flash. I'm so sorry. If you guys are techie, help us out. Why? Like she can't get the autofocus to quit knocking. (laughs) I I can't get that to stop. And the flashing is new. So I'm like the flashing thing. I I don't know. If you guys are techie, please tell us (laughs) what's going on. (laughs) leave us a comment on youtube or um you know if you're if you're listening to this wherever you are please share subscribe please leave us a review that way other people can find us and we can have a bigger discussion that this can get to other people we really need your help on that right as much in the same way it works with talking to your instructors the more you guys talk to us the more you talk to us tell us your experiences the better conversation we can have yeah. And here's a thought. If there's anything you, we've got, we've got some pretty fun guests coming up here lined up, but if there is any topics oh, yeah. that you'd like to see us address, please let us know. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. See you next time. Um,